<clears throat> Good morning. Gonna start cleaning out this new mold here that uh, we finished up yesterday. So I'm not gonna talk to you guys a whole lot. It'll probably be boring because there's no audio. But if you want to watch me clean clay for a little while, uh, here it is. Uh, I did cheat a little bit when we were demolding a, a big piece of this who already broke free. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, I left it there so you could see what it kind of looked like. Uh, I'm gonna start going. Uh, it's all monster clay, so we're gonna recycle all this. Um, but again, big chunk. Uh, haven't revealed what this mask is yet. It's still a surprise, but uh, as I start pulling clay, some of you will probably very easily be able to start figuring out what it is. So uh, that was, cheating like i said that was the easy part but we're gonna we're gonna get in here and we're gonna see how it goes this morning it's nice and cold in the shop so uh for louisiana that's unusual but it will allow this to to break off in a little bit bigger pieces and not get so gooey and stretchy um, and i may step away from the camera because i'm realizing i left all my tools in the other room I mean, I have some of them here, but. Sometimes you just want to use brute strength. Casey, sorry for destroying your sculpt, but uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. This one's not a bad mold because there's not a whole lot of really sharp edges for me to catch my hands on. But you gotta be careful. There are some sharp edges in there. Pulling on it. Usually you can feel the consistency of the clay like when it's going to break. So you don't pull quite as hard. But sometimes it'll surprise you. Yeah, the rest of this is gonna be work, to be honest with you. Now we're getting into the detail areas. And again, this, I don't know how long I'll stay live with you, but I figured I'd show you guys some stuff. Um, I was hoping I'd get some big chunks to pull out of it. I may switch over to the other side. Um, it looks like I'm on the back side right now. Yeah, the back side right now. popsicle sticks. Um, I have some little bamboo pushers that I use to, to help get some of these little crevices out. Um, you don't want to scrape up your mold. You just spent a lot of time and money to get. You don't want to be sitting there doing repairs. You want to get right to casting and producing the good stuff. Uh, 
Uh, obviously, I can't see any of your guys' comments. I will probably go over and check them every once in a while. I don't. I have no idea. It's just me in the back of the shop here. Um, everyone else is up front. I, I wasn't going to be wearing a mask while doing this, so uh, I've distanced myself. You'll hear the rest of the shop activity. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, people wander back here. I am next to uh, one of our paint booths uh, where we do some of our stuff that we're, we, we exhaust just right to the back of the shop. Um, so you'll hear the blowers kick on. Uh, we'll see how well the stream does with all that stuff going on. But right now, it's the morning still. All the painters are over there in the paint department knocking out some masks. And then uh, they save any of that kind of work that comes back here to doing batches. Right, cleaning a mold like this, the first one I did took me a day and a half. Um, it was uh, the fungi mold, which was pretty intricate. And I didn't know what I was doing, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't have all of the proper tools. I mean, I know how to clean clay out of a, a, a mold, but I didn't have the proper tools to do it with. And so there's some tricks now that I've learned. It speeds my process up. For you veterans out there, you're probably laughing. But yeah, no, I don't, I don't always clean molds. I do a lot of other stuff around here, but I've jumped in to try to assist the mold department in getting as many of these done before Transworld as possible. And we have five more sculpts that need to be molded. They're sitting in our vault. Actually, one of them I saw in the sculpting room this morning, so it looked like we were prepping it possibly to go in the mold. Uh, there, it, this is one, it, the, this mask will require uh, multiple molds, so this is just the primary piece. Uh, Kenny, right now, is working on the secondary jaw piece. Uh, not all of our masks are made that way, uh, but some, it's just easier to do it in multiple pieces and then build the mask as a unit. I just want to make some progress. Show you a little bit right there. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break these little corners free because there is a there's some fine detail in that area, and I know that's what's kind of grabbing onto the clay right now. So I'll kind of break this free a little bit, just a piece at a time. That's one of those sharp areas, just cut. caught my finger. Didn't cut it, but it hurt. frustrating me right now. We're going to come back to that one in a second. See if I can get some action for you guys so that we have something entertaining to watch and it's not me just picking away at small little pieces of clay. All right, here we go. So this is the front side of the mold. Bam. Um, core's already been removed. Uh, we did that a little bit earlier. Tabby will uh, put some video of the actual popping of the mold um, and getting it to this. I just figured 
why not show this live? There's nothing really, you know, any, anyone that's sculpted before, this is not new. Uh, if you've made masks, uh, this is the, the downside of making the mask. This is the work part uh, where you actually have to just get in here and get your hands dirty, destroy all that work that was done before. Ooh, this, here, there's some good texture on this piece. I see like I cut my, cut my finger on that mold right there. But yeah, there's some texture from that. I don't know if it's focusing or not. Oh yeah, there we go, bam. All right, so it's, it's going. Uh, again, not my primary job, but uh, you know, it doesn't take a, a, I'm not demeaning anyone, but it doesn't take a rocket science scientist. You just gotta get in here and work. Um, I'm sure there's probably some better methods um, if I will, if I could watch the comments, I wish I, I would be reading them, but I'm not. What I do pretty much works. And, uh, this is kind of what I have scheduled for the afternoon. So, uh, yesterday was a, a busy day. Uh, got a lot done. Uh, and I don't have anything really scheduled that I, that I need to get done until the afternoon. So, um, then in the afternoon, I have some, like, three different things that have a, a time crunch at that time that I cannot start until the afternoon. Still curing. There we go. Yeah. So obviously any of the areas that don't have quite as much detail, they're gonna come out of that the mold real quick. I'll be scraping all that probably most of most of the morning. Um well can you can you let likes to keep some secrets around here, but I, I talk a lot and I, I get bored when I'm just sitting back here and I'm looking at a camera. Uh, I forget you guys are kind of there. I just, it looks like just, you know, it's just the phone to me. Um, but uh, we keep all the clay and we separate, you know, as I do mold, I'll keep all this clay in a separate bucket or two. Um, and then we'll weigh that out. And that's how we know how much silicone for the first pour. That way we don't waste a whole lot of silicone. Um, you also don't want to under pour silicone. We do that all the time. Um, everybody does, you know, uh, and then you lose half your bib or, you know, whatever other details. So we try to get as accurate as possible on the first pour. And then, uh, that first casting usually never leaves the shop anyways. So, uh, we'll modify from there if we need to add or subtract silicone from, from the pour. really see it, but I'm getting some good movement here. Break, break it off in one piece. There's some really sharp edges down here. So I'll have to move really slow down there. I really should have trimmed my fingernails before today. Contraction and expansion uh, kind of helps get it out of some of those places. Uh, other times, if you if you mess up, it gets wet and gooey. If, it, if you get it too warm, then you got to wait for it to cool up. Uh, the final stages, uh, I like it to be warm because this, at that point, I'm kind of just scrubbing it out. break away because I, I have a better bamboo pusher in the other room. It's, it is warming up back here as you can see. I'm starting to sweat. I'm a sweater to be honest. I'm gross.
So we're getting to a point. There's some inserts in there. I wonder what those could be. So that's what I'm trying to kind of break free here and pull out of the clay before I keep. Yeah, it's almost a little too cold to be honest with you. I might actually throw that one out in the sun for a little bit. Reason I haven't gone and got this tool is I just don't want to leave you guys alone on the camera looking at a, a bunch of screen. I'm hoping someone's going to walk through here that I can con in to go in to go get it for me. I know Tabby, you're probably watching this up at the front. Come back in the back if you get a chance. We're getting there. There's more of those inserts in there, so I got to get to those. But we're getting good chunks, get ready to come out. And what'll happen is I'll get to a point where I'll be able to pull a big chunk of that. Let's see if I can open some of this up for you though. And you see, I'm not really scraping. What, I, what I'm doing is I'm kind of using the tool and I'm getting in there. I'm using pressure of the clay itself, you know, just like that hydraulic pressure almost to uh, force the clay to come up in the hopes that it's going to come up in a big chunk. Um, I mean, you could sit there and scrape the whole thing, but imagine that would take forever. Um, this way it's a little tedious, especially at first. You know, I, I could have started this probably a little bit later, but I definitely wanted to show some of the reveals as it came up. Um, but yeah, I'll get to a point where it'll it'll get to another point where I could probably peel that whole thing out. Um, I'll check comments here in just a second or two because I'm getting a little tired. I'll stop, drink a little coffee. Um, I don't know how long I'll stay on, but I imagine I'll probably stay on for a while or until someone pulls me away from this. Oh yeah, oh here we go, here we go, there we go, there we go, yeah. That's what I was hoping for. So yeah, sometimes a little pre-work will save you. What's that? There's a nice detail in there still. It's obviously pretty warped for me yanking on it. There we go, that's a little bit better. All right, yeah, that was a, that was a good one. Let me stop and check check comments and stuff like that. All right, whoa, okay, lots of people watching. Cameron, what's up, man? Um, let's see, Herman, yep, yep, uh, and it it's there. Hey, Herman, how's it going? Uh, everybody else, I, I, there's so many names I, I can't really going. I know a lot of you aren't were probably watching earlier. I don't know who else is there. Uh, Maximus, man, how you doing, Dennis? Uh, Angus, Darren. All right. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for watching you guys. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, here we got Herman. Uh, I wish you could be there helping you sculpting, molding, cleaning molds. Uh, Herman, I, again, I, we've been so busy. We've had a couple of things going on in the shop. I haven't had a chance to talk to Kenny, uh, about final details about what was in your email. Um, uh, but we are going to follow up with that. I, I, I would love to make that happen. And I don't see why we can't. It's just, it, it's literally just having the time to sit and work out the details. Uh, but yeah, no, you're, you'll be here. Don't worry. Um, Kevin. All right. Awesome. I'm glad it, it is a little satisfying. I'm awkward on camera and that's why I, I don't like to really have my face out. Usually you guys, when you see me, I'm always behind the camera. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Just be glad. Monster play. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, if it was the hard stuff, I would be yelling and screaming. And what's funny is the soft stuff. Sometimes it's hard to work with as well. Um, but it, for me, I find it's just getting it to the right temperature. Uh, and then I get it, I, I'm able to get big chunks of it to come up like that. So let's see here. Um, 
Purple Dracul, let's see, it hasn't hit, hit my inspection shelf yet, but uh, there's a lot going on in the paint room right now. So Cameron, yeah, that hopefully that'll be, uh, that'll be done for you soon. Okay, uh, that was a nice little break. Caught up on everyone. Nice, again, thank you guys for watching. Um, <sighs> coffee is good. It is uh, 11 o'clock in the, I guess, pre or brunch time around here. But uh, I don't need breakfast, so the coffee is what sustains me. And yeah, so we've been super busy here at CFX. Uh, we're actually really thankful that Transworld was postponed a little while because obviously, as you can see, we're still pumping molds out. Uh, yeah, it's it's been challenging uh, through the pandemic and everything like that, keeping... Uh, we, we were an established business because of uh, some of the other stuff that, or not established business, but uh, essential business. Well, uh, coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Uh, we were considering essential business uh, due to some of the other projects that we do in-house that, that we don't really talk about a whole lot. But believe it or not, we do more than just the masks. Um, and sometimes that's why projects will come through and we have to kind of pick and choose, you know. We've been doing this for a long time. We have a, t a ton of mask designs out there, and we love to modify those existing designs just to, to be creative. In fact, a lot of the earlier designs, that, that's kind of why they are the way they are is because they were designed to be additionally modified. Uh, for a long time, CFX had the, the, the mask maker thing on the website where you could make and design any, any mask you want and any paint scheme and add-ons. That's kind of why the masks were like that. And so we still like to, to hold to that kind of th that that philosophy that we want to make masks that are easily modifiable into the character you want um, but we're also starting to focus a little bit more on just very specific designs you know so if we want to do uh, a demon it's going to be a demon you know it's going to have everything it's not going to be just a realistic male with some horns and stuff added on we're, we're, we're really going to try and up that aesthetic up um, and and you'll see that you know the fungi mask uh, that that it's a fungus mask you know it, it could be modified into some of the last of us stuff and maybe some other character but all those characters are going to be you know a fungus base character uh, and you'll see that also with some of these other ones now we do have a really cool uh, it's kind of a realistic, it's a modified realistic male coming out. It'll, it'll make a great clown. Um, I won't talk a whole lot about that one, but I am excited for that one. I, I know that one's going to be coming through the mold room really soon. Um, it's done. Uh, it was one of our design a mask contest submissions. Uh, so that, if that gives you any clue, um, I, I didn't see you watching out there, um, the designer, but uh, it may be there. Uh, Herman, I know, is watching, and he's he's got more stuff coming from us. So Herman, Herman has been amazing for CFX, um, and that's why we talk about we want to get him out here, um, Costa Rica. I remember. Um, I don't know. I have no idea where I got Portugal from. I think, uh, again, like I said, I'm pretty sure that was someone else that I was working with. So I apologize. Um, it's kind of weird because I do a lot. I I, I hate being stuck to my phone um even though as i sit here and live stream and stuff like that's kind of ironic but uh yeah so i, I don't I, I try to work as much as i can throughout the day so you know i have mask inspections to do um i have you know usually there's a manager's meeting where we have to kind of figure out what projects are going on um any of the film projects that, that go on lately um i have been second to kenny or second or third sometimes sometimes keith is right in there um but you know just helping them cast whatever they need to get cast uh, we were doing some some you guys saw me do some of the, the horse poop and stuff like that that i was talking about um but yeah we, we still have some film projects uh louisiana is actually picking up on film projects right now uh they just moved the disney production from atlanta back out here to baton rouge um not sure who it is i mean there's rumors all around town i'm not gonna spread any of those rumors but uh yeah there is a disney production coming in um you guys know we've done work with disney before but we, we're not attached to this project as of yet. As of yet. Uh, 
but yeah, so uh, we'll see. It is hard. The, the film projects are very taxing on us because we have a small crew that is able to work on those projects and step away from mass production and and like we say, the secret service side of the shop. You know, and it's not too hard to figure out what we do. It's not like we're being super secretive. We just uh, we do have NDAs with each of the companies that we work with uh, about not disclosing what we do for them. So, so yeah, and it's nothing. It's it's actually really boring the, the, the stuff that we do for them. But uh, it is what it is, and it helps pay some of the bills. Um, so, so yeah, and and that's kind of run as a separate department in, in the company. Uh, we're all here in the same shop um, and we all interact on a daily basis. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of handled separately from any of the mass stuff. So there's no, no stuff. I am strictly on the mass side of stuff. Uh, the only times I do medical projects at all is it's like, hey, we need an extra set of hands casting into these molds. You know, if you're not doing anything, will you, will you cast them uh, in between mask inspections or whatever? Yeah. Uh, not making huge progress right now, but uh, it's getting there. Hang on, so I'll give you guys a, a quick little view of where we're at with things. Um, all right, I am gonna take this. I'm gonna step away. The camera's gonna stay live. Uh, I wish I had some like music and stuff for you guys, but it, you know. You, I'll, They'll probably copyright strike me and stuff. So I'll just be right back. Uh, let me go grab a couple tools. Awesome bamboo pushers. I'd walk through the shop, so I'm again, just kind of pushing it down using hydraulic pressure of the stick against the mold, pushing just the clay out. The clay, again, it, it, it's a monster clay medium. So uh, it'll, it'll move on you, you know. And right now it's probably, oh here, I'll tell you exactly how, how warm it is in the shop. Let's see here. 
So it's, it's 63, 63 degrees Fahrenheit uh, here in the shop today. Uh, again, for some reason, we're, we're in a little cold snap here in Louisiana. Um, it's only in the 50s outside today. Uh, it was almost 80s earlier, like on Monday and Tuesday. supposed to be a little bit cold tomorrow and then I think go right back to normal we've had a lot of rain as well lately weather hasn't been great at least uh, it's, it's nice while we're here at work and then uh, on the weekends it, it rains which is pretty typical lately I'm, I am making some good progress guys just so you know uh, I, sometimes it doesn't look like it but yeah, no, I'm about to get a good chunk come out of this thing I don't want to get too excited and start yanking on it if I can maybe break a little bit more of it free. So again, I'm gonna just kind of take my time. I got. I, I know what details are in here. This is one of my. Uh, man, I, I actually love all the sculpts. I shouldn't say like I have a favorite, but this one's been very anticipated. Uh, the, the shop, the quite a few members of the shop have been asking for this design to be done. Uh, long before I took over as a, the mask operations manager. Um, so yeah, I'm excited that it's coming to fruition. Uh, Casey Tatis is the one that sculpted it. Herman Seleski is the one that designed it. Um, I just kind of gave Herman a, man, I, all I had to do with Herman is just kind of give him a basic idea and he just knocks it out of the park. Um, he has some, some personal designs that we're going to, uh, purchase off of him or, or work out some, some we'll, we'll purchase it off you whatever way um, and get those sculpts started um, as soon as I get everything that I already have sculpted out of the mold room um, that is the I, I, I want to move faster and stuff like that um, man it's hard to find people to work right now uh, I'll be honest with you I don't know if you guys have noticed but we have a we, we regularly post help wanted stuff um, we have some positions here in the shop that uh, are, are not sculpting, not painting. Um, again, some of it's the Secret Service type stuff. And it's, it's not super creative work, but it's steady, regular work. You're here in the shop with everything. Um, but it's hard to find people. So uh, if you guys know anyone in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that wants to come work at CFX, you won't be working on the masks. I mean... Right now, there's no positions on the mass side that are available. We, we just filled our last painter position. Um, but we do have some uh, mold making and some other patching and trimming style work. Uh, that's our air compressor. Let's give it a second. Give me a chance to work on this close second issue. Hey, Rebecca. Hi. I, I'm not talking to myself. I have a camera here. I noticed. OK. I just, <laughs> so you, you gave me, she gave me the look like, oh, there's crazy drops talking to yourself to get in the back. Do that. I get excited. It's salvageable. The nice thing about the bamboo is uh, the way the fibers lay out, it still retains some of it. Yeah, look, I, got my, I didn't even notice that one. Got myself there. Maybe you said the camera on me or something. I'm not paying as close as I'm trying to entertain you guys as well as get this stuff out. Now, so that wasn't very exciting. I don't know if I should have talked. Hey Brett, uh, just so you know, yeah, we are live right now. Hello, everybody in live land. I haven't been looking at the comments. Anyone saying anything interesting over there? Can't wait for my purple Dracul to get here. Don't know if it started yet. From no, Cameron one. Pierce. Yeah, that was I had seen. That was the last comment that I had seen. So I, I let people know that I wasn't reading comments, so they may not be saying anything. I haven't scrolled. Does it scroll? Uh, yeah, it does scroll. Oh. Feel free to scroll. I don't know if what's forward and what's back. I think up will take you to the bottom, to the newest stuff. 
Oh. I think. If it doesn't, go the other way. Well, there's just so much in both directions, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of it was just like the notifications of the people watching. Um. Ooh, there's some jaw pieces or teeth pieces coming out. Teeth or maybe something else. It may not actually be a tooth. It might be called something else, but I'm not gonna say it just yet. You're gonna have to have a reveal of some sorts. BB Guns is watching. What you think, BB Guns? <laughs> and uh, this is a little bit more. I, I got a couple of good big pieces for them, but uh, yeah, no, we're we're in we're in the detail. We're in the weeds right now. Trying to dig us out. It's a Psycho Gorman comment. Oh. Uh, let's talk about Psycho Gorman. Who's seen Psycho Gorman? Brett. I know you, Brett's the one that referred me to Psycho Gorman. Uh, it's a... Yeah, if you want a Psycho Gorman, uh, call an order in with a custom alteration for an Abaddon and a Dagon fin and uh, some additional oh, yeah. uh, alteration work. I don't have a price for you, but call it in. We'll be glad to make it. Two two five seven five six seven eight seven five. Jonathan will answer the phone right now. Wow, it's like an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's fans world part two and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, Tammy and I do, we do live streams usually uh, like every other Friday. We're a little bit behind on them right now because we are prepping for Trans World, which is the big Halloween uh, convention that happens every year. Normally happens in March, usually like mid March. Uh, it was canceled last year due to the pandemic. Uh, literally, we were packed up and uh, ready to go, and it canceled uh, the Friday before we, we would leave to go to the show. So it's been a little while since we've done it, so we're trying to make sure the booth is ready. Um, we drive out there. Uh, we have a trailer, and so we have to make sure the trailer's all set, ready to go. Um, we, ha we do a practice build of the booth here in the shop. Uh, because every year we usually, uh, Tabby and I are there every year. Um, Brett's there every year. Uh, Kenny will not be there this year. Uh, he is leaving it up to us to take care of everything. Uh, and he's going to enjoy some much needed personal time. Uh, well, I mean, he'll be here at the shop and making sure that everything keeps going while we're out there, but he won't have all of us in his hair all day, every day, bugging him about stuff. So he'll probably be able to get some good work done. Um, hopefully wrap up some of the projects that he's been trying to get done. Uh, but yeah. So uh, I can't remember where I was going. I know we are talking about Transworld. Uh, yeah, so we've been prepping for Transworld. Uh, Jason, I'm live right now. Hey. Yeah, more people. We're, we're, we're a naughty group here in the shop. What? I, 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 I want to keep it kind of PG friendly. But Jason's walking by behind us. You going to lunch? Uh, no, I'm scrubbing something out of my car. Ah. I forgot today was Wednesday. Ah, uh, Hawaiian shirt Wednesday. Hawaiian shirt Waikiki Wednesday. Wednesday. Waikiki Wednesday. I'll be I knew I was going to be clean and clay, so there's no way I was wearing mine. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we do, we do shirt days here at the shop every once in a while. It used to be Hawaiian shirt Friday. Uh, but we, a lot of the shop has switched to a, a 410 schedule, so uh, a lot of people aren't here on Fridays anymore. Um, doing what we do, the 10 hour day is a little bit more productive for us because a lot of times it's a hurry up and wait game. You know, you, you, you get everything ready. This, this is, you know, a lot of the work part of it, but day to day production and uh, pumping out a mask, once the mold is made and uh, in the production line, Basically, you know, it's you, you got to mix the silicone, uh, make sure you get the get it all in the right colors, uh, and then you cast it, and then you know it's it's two or three hours before we even start looking at that mold again, and you can only have so many molds going at a time, uh, 
you know, before you, you really start stacking things up. Uh, also with silicone, you know, we, we time everything so that way uh, it, it hits the paint room at the right schedule. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you want to go on camera? You want to say anything? Well, I think I can help you with some of the questions. Oh, okay, or are awesome. you seeing those? Uh, no, I, I, I haven't even been looking. Okay. Uh, Jonathan just stepped behind the camera, guys. So, yeah, if you hey guys. Any questions, uh, That's, this is Jonathan. my hand. Hello. Yep. That's how I um, used to do it. <laughs> uh, how many hours on average, start to finish, does it take you guys to complete a mask? Okay, so are you talking from like sculpt stage to a finished mask? Let's talk the whole process. We'll, we'll talk the whole thing. Okay, so uh, this mask right here went through a design phase of maybe about a week, uh, kind of back, back and forth. Now that's not all day, every day, but that's uh, handy, like having a design handing it off to the designer with, with some ideas and some reference pictures, um, letting the designer do their work and then get back to us. Um, and then we check that design out, see what we like, make any modifications and changes that we want to do, give it back to the designer. Um, hopefully that back and forth only happens once or twice, right? So it, it's kind of like, here's, here's the idea. And we try to, as quickly as possible, get back and be like, this is, no, let go this direction, this, this, and that. Um, and so, yeah, so, so a week with that, I, I'm, I'm drawing this out a little bit, <laughs> but, uh, after that, then it, after it's designed, then the sculptor will usually take about a week or two, depending on the sculptor. Uh, this sculpt right here took two weeks to do. Um, but it was also the first time that the sculptor had ever done anything mask related like this in terms of a, a full head silicone mask. Uh, and it's an impressive sculpt. So, but that's very, very much a lot of sculpts could take you know some of the in-house sculpts that we have have been going on for two months or three months uh so and josh i'm we, gonna pause you real quick because we've got some new people showing up but i just want to say hi real quick okay. uh michael Silik, i'm probably mispronouncing that tony ellis christopher cruz bob dempsey john hancocks victor ruiz and jess lelpo welcome to the stream guys yeah josh and, is pulling so, some clay out of a sculpt right now yeah so this is our newest sculpt uh, that was done by Casey Tavis. I, I like throwing her name out there, giving her some credit. Uh, she came out to visit us back in uh, October, was it? I think yeah. so. I think it was October. Um, and spent two weeks here at the shop and uh, knocked this awesome design out for us. Uh, and that, that shows you how far behind we are in the mold making. That's entirely <laughs> on us. Um, uh, we're working on it, though. Yeah, yeah. It, it, trust me, you, you guys can see over the last couple of weeks how it's improving. Um, we, we, we just fixed a couple of things that we needed to fix and now we're, we're back on track. Yeah. Lizeth says, I love it. Thanks a Lizeth. We appreciate that. Uh, welcome Cameron Pierce. Welcome Keith Wilson. Uh, Cameron's been in and out for a little while. Cool. So Cameron has a, a hey, Jonathan can maybe help you with that. Do you, do you remember, uh, any purple draft rules that are coming through the system? Oh yeah. Right. Um, so I would say the, maybe over the last month or two. Yeah. One of those is Cameron's. Cool, cool. Well, looking forward to hearing what you think about it, Cameron. Uh, and Josh, can you get, pick back up on that discussion about uh, dirt, you okay. know, timelines? So, so, all right, we're gonna we're gonna go. I have a sculpt in my hands, and it's ready for the mold room. Um, mold usually takes about two days to complete, uh, and then a day of cleanup and prep time. Uh, then it goes to the casting process. The casting process takes uh, from start to finish. Let's just we're gonna round, and we're gonna say like three hours. Uh, we'll say four hours because there's some prep time um, and getting the mold and the core and all that good stuff ready. Um, so I'm not adding as I go. So I'm just throwing the hours out there. Maybe Jonathan, if you can add. <laughs> oh yeah, I've definitely been keeping track. <laughs> uh, then uh, after that, it goes to patching and trimming and they'll clean the mask up and make sure it's perfect and ready to go. And that usually takes, uh, again, another about two or three hours. And it's because it's a, a hurry up and wait game. We do the work and then you have to wait for the silicone to cure before it can be moved and, and go on to the next step. Uh, then it goes to the paint room um, and the paint room uh, that can take anywhere from six to 20 hours, depending on the paint job. Um, no joke. Uh, that is the longest part. Jen and the paint team are just fantastic. Uh, if you, if you have one of our masks, you, you can see that the small little capillaries and all that little veining they're, they literally sit there and just go and they're doing all that by hand and they're, they're able to eyeball exactly where it needs to go. Um, we, I mean, we have some, we have some formulas and stuff like that. So all the colors stay consistent, but yeah, no, they're doing all that personally by hand. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm going to say 24 hours. 
26 hours on, on average of continual work on the mask. Uh, so, and that's, that's after the sculpt is done. So yeah, that, and that, that's kind of why they have a price point like they do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people are always, you know, it, it's, it's a real thing. I was a customer before I ever worked on the masks. And I, I used to bitch, I still bitch about the pricing. Uh, <laughs> ask Jonathan, I'm, I'm always the one like in every meeting when it comes to like, hey, how are we gonna price this mask? I'm like, I don't care, put it as low as possible. Well, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna bring a sales perspective to this. So I would say that our prices are pretty dang competitive if you look throughout the entire silicone yeah. mask market. And we do work with a high quality product. Uh, you can tell just from all the detail that Josh has gone into that a lot of work goes into these pieces. These are handmade wearable works of art. And I don't think that can be stressed enough. If anybody, you know, knows us and has had our masks, you know this to be the case. Now, in terms of the wait times, some of you might be thinking, okay, Josh has just told me that once we've got the mold, you guys can make a mask like in a couple of days. How come I get a six week wait time when I place an order? And that's a great question. It is a good question. You get a six week wait time because, and I'm really sorry to break this to some of you guys, there's other customers out there. And I'm, I'm being very playful. But we want to make sure that anytime, yeah, it's true. We take, we take orders all day, every day. All day. Um, and what we want to make sure is when you place an order with composite effects, you know when your mask is going to be ready. So if I were to take an order and try to give you a wait time just based off of your order and then this other customer just based off of their order, yeah, I might be able to start off giving you a couple of days wait time, but then that's going to go out to a few weeks and then maybe a month because we're not allowing ourselves that space to work on everything in a convenient manner in an efficient manner. So and we, we don't want to rush your mask. No, these things take time. There are multiple stages of inspection throughout this entire process. Um, so we give those four, six, eight week wait times because we want to make sure that when you place an order, we can give you a due date right then and there. I'm not, you know, saying, Hey, it's going to be re ready when it's ready. You know, when you place an order with us, cool, I'm going to get it near the end of June or something like that. So giving those long wait times allows us to work with all these different orders, keep everything in a timely fashion and be able to be consistent for you guys. Yep. So, uh, Mike Garcia, welcome. We appreciate you watching. Michael Ogden, how's it going? How's it going? Uh, Nick Carroll's kind of uh, commenting a little bit here. I think he was replying about the, uh, I don't know, he said, yes, they are. So he was being very positive and agreeing with something. <laughs> and um, Cameron Pierce says, just saying, the price for the Dracul is dead cheap. Y'all's masks are the best and extremely well priced for what you're getting. Well, Cameron, that's awesome. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, no, thank you. We work hard and we want to make sure that that comes across. So it's great to hear that. Uh, Silas Reaper asks, is it possible to have a certain male mask into a female size mask? Josh, you want to deal with that or you want me to reply? Uh, what? I want to hear your reply and I'll jump in and we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the, the general way that things have always worked is that our masks are sized based off of the form that the original mask was sculpted in. So, you know, for those of you who are kind of starting with us, you can see that Josh is pulling this clay out of a mold. That's the remainder of the sculpt. This sculpt was put into the mold basically to give this negative space that could then be cast into the mask. Okay. So, so that yeah, so sizing. The core will then go in here right. and we'll, then silicone will fill in that where the clay used to be and that's what becomes your mask. Right. But the sizing was determined way back in the sculpting phase based off of the head form that was yeah. sculpted on. So we've got a male fit and a female fit uh, sculpting form. So you can see on our website that a mask will be listed as male fit or female fit. So the standard um, response to the question, hey, can I get a male mask turned into a female mask is we can do it, but we have to go back and sculpt the mask from the ground up. But big B U T and maybe I've been a T. On things. This man has got some things going on that I don't know how much he wants to talk about. But so, go so ahead. yeah, I, I just I wanted to feel out what, what you were going to allow out there. So yeah, so I've been working on some new methods. Uh, I'm not going to say what they are because obviously uh, it's kind of I'm the only one doing it as far as I know of right now. Um, although I'm sure people will say I've done it before and stuff like that. I don't I don't care about that. I'm going to bring it to market. Um, but yeah, we're going to be able to offer uh, probably about 75% of our male masks in a female size. Uh, it will be, we haven't, the final size hasn't been determined right now. It will not be equivalent to what our female core is. Uh, it will be a different size than that. But yes, we are going to be offering it. We're, it, we're in the testing phase right now to make sure that this, that it's not going to compromise any part of the mask. We want to make sure you're going to get Everything's gonna stay exactly the same. It's just going to literally be a little bit smaller. Um, 
so yeah so hopefully soon stay with us uh, I will update you guys I do have a finished product and it is 100% wearable and doable uh, we were gonna take it to the Transworld show and I was going to have a couple of select people uh, actually try it on and, and kind of play with it a little bit to see if, it, if it's something that, that's of interest out there. But just your question alone confirms my suspicion that, that this would be a good thing. Uh, Cameron Pierce asks, uh, or says rather, I'll be doing a review of my Dracul on my Haunters podcast channel. I know y'all are going to blow my expectations out of the water of my mask like y'all always do. Well, uh, let us know when you post that video and we will reshare it uh, regardless of if it's a good or bad review, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, any um, feedback. That's that's what we want. Yeah, that's yeah. how you grow. And we do want that feedback. Like for any of you guys, mm -hmm. if you guys ever order a mask and you're not satisfied with it, um, we just had this issue yesterday. I won't go into details, but you know, if you're not satisfied with it, let us know. Yeah, and look, it happens from time to time. We take enough orders. I would be shocked if we didn't have the occasional issue, but that's that's part of the gig, man. And you know what? we'll find a way to help you with it, you know? Um, I, we've been in business long enough, and we come from, um, I think, the same communities that you guys uh, dwell in, and so we know what it's like, you know? And this, look, this is a big We're investment. we and cosplayers. Yeah. We, that's, that's why we do Absolutely. I, I own 58 of these masks that I bought. It's, it's, <laughs> He's got it's a, a problem. Sick addiction. Yeah. He has an issue. Uh, while we're talking, I, I am let, I show, I, I'm getting some big chunks coming out right now. Boom, right there. All right, and I was hoping that would stick together a little bit more, but I was like, let's see if I can get this guy to... I believe in you, man. This is just like the super thick section of... The, the sculpt was probably about that thick. So what kind of things do you have to be watching out for when you're pulling clay out of a mold? Um, well, I get it all stuck in my fingernails because like I was telling, <laughs> saying earlier, I didn't trim my fingernails like I should have. Um, you start to see the battle damage mm -hmm. starting to form. Um, you can wear gloves or something like that if you're a wuss. <laughs> so, I, just, I mean, I'm teasing, but that, that's how I am. I, I, I'm, I'm hardcore. Like, well, you got to have kind of tough hands to be doing this, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to mess around. I want to get this thing. I, I say that as I've been sitting here talking on the live stream for a while. <laughs> I, but I want to get it demolded. Uh, yeah. We want to get a couple of castings of this thing out before trains rolled. Uh, I want to get Jen plenty of time uh, and her team to, to get two of them painted for us. Uh, so that way we have a couple variants out there. Um, obviously, we'll do the big web release as well. Uh huh. And I'm going to go ahead real quick and uh, welcome Ginger Estep and Philip Jackson. Uh, they're watching now. Welcome, guys. We're just pulling some clay out of a mold, as you can see. Uh, any guesses as to what this mold is yet? Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Tell us what you think this mold is going to be. I, I know you've seen a lot of the detail, but obviously you're seeing the reverse kind of relief of it. Yeah, so. so yeah. Kind of frame that up up for you a little yes, bit. The, this is the back side. Uh huh. Again, uh, most of the detail area is still underneath that clay. Uh huh. We didn't say we we're gonna make it easy for y'all. Yeah. And then uh, here's the front side. So you see it in there. I'm starting to get mm -hmm. some of uh, that front of the face area. Yeah. Who could this be? Um, we we released the crap out of this stuff. Uh, <laughs> But it's still, again, you know, depending on the amount of detail in there, it, it just... It so, uh, uh, Herman says, one of the most difficult things to do when cleaning up a mold is trying to keep it from moving around. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see. Oh, real facts, Herman, real facts. Uh, Nick Carroll makes a guess here, plant-based? Uh, no, not plant-based. Ooh, interesting. All yeah. right, yeah. Uh, Let, let's say yeah. less less flora. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, that's, that's a good clue. A little bit of a clue that's there. That's a really good clue right there, guys. Less flora. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Tabitha might be helping us out here. She says, well, it's organic for sure, but not a plant, winky face. Ah. 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 Uh, Angel Camacho is watching. Welcome. You see we're pulling some uh, clay out of a mold here. Well, Josh, I think I've kept you from doing some real hard work for long enough, man. I'm going to go ahead and uh, release you back to these folks. All right, uh, how many viewers we got right now? Uh, right now we're looking at 20 people looking at us. Nice. Awesome. Well, hey, hang out with us. Uh, I'll, I will talk a little bit, but I am, I'm getting into some detail area, so I'll, I will just be here. Um, right, Tony yeah. Ellis guessed Creature from the Black Lagoon or a Slee Stack. Uh, well, you know, we did Creature from the Black Lagoon uh, as a licensed product for Universal. Uh, we carried that license for two years, I believe. Yeah. Um, we just ended the license at the end of 2020. Uh, we had sold quite a few of the masks, uh, but we want, we're shifting our focus to our designs. Mm -hmm. um, 
love doing the license stuff. We've done so much license stuff. It's, I think we've done more license stuff than any other mass company. So, silicone mask company, Trick or Treat Studios probably has done more license than us. But uh, silicone mask companies, uh, you know, we did Marvel, we did Game of Thrones, we're still doing Game of Thrones. Uh, we did uh, Universal. Universal. We had Troma. Yeah, we had Troma, mm -hmm. uh, which we're, we're hoping to renew that one. That, uh, but again, we're, we don't want to do too many more. We just want to be able, we have the, the mask and the mold still, so we would love to be able to resell it. Um, we, don't have, we don't actually have any masks. We have the mold that we could make the masks out of. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we've had a ton of vice. The, the Marvel license was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we offered some of the coolest licensed Marvel stuff out there. Uh, you know, oh yeah, and we still get requests for it. Those images still float around, yep. um, and there's still some people there's who a, are rocking those masks. A guy today masks. looking for a, uh, a red. He wants to trade for Dylan. Dylan Tooth, I believe, wants to trade for a CFX Red Skull. So I know one of you guys out there. Ah. I think you guys were in Europe. Well, hang on, H hang on. Let me let me stop you right there, oh. Mr. Josh. Don't ask anybody else for a Red Skull mask. You come to me, email me. Uh, we got a mask called Ramsey's. Oh. I'm telling you, you paint Ramsey's why red. Do we, why don't we promote? Is it, it's a weird thing because we carry the Marvel license, so we don't like to do things. But know that we can modify a lot of our masks. We, we do want to be careful. We're not going to start to make a Venom or a Hulk for you, okay? Because that's just too close to the mark, and we want to keep good blood between us and Marvel. Trust me, you don't want the Marvel lawyers coming for you. And but what, look, and what if they come up with a cool character that we want to do again exactly. that, just, that we can't resist? Exactly. And so what we want to do is kind of find, you know, acceptable ways to do it. And Ramsey's, he's our mask. That is our copyrighted design. Nothing saying we can't paint that red. And a red Ramsey's yeah. works amazingly yeah. well as a red skull. Look, look, on a, look on the website. Pull up, mm -hmm. Go all over to our website, guys, and uh, pull up the Ramsey's. And uh, if, you, if you're good at Photoshop, Photoshop him red. Or but just imagine him in red. And uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you a couple more guesses, and then i got to run. Okay, uh, I know I said that about 30 <laughs> minutes ago. I don't mind, like I said, I don't mind the companies. Yeah, it almost looks, uh, this is Cameron Pierce, it almost looks like a Celestial Dryad or something like that, at least what I'm guessing from the textures. Um, that might have to be one of our next masks. Ah, uh, I think that would go well with the Archangel. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Good guess, mm -hmm. but no, I love the idea. Nope. Nick Carroll, rock slash mineral? Ah, uh, no. No. Le less uh, less mineral, and we did give a hint earlier where we said uh, less flora, more fauna. So I'll let that stick. Czar Kolarf is watching. Hello, Czar. Uh, Tony Ellis, some kind of water creature. I think I saw scales. Huh. I'm going to go ahead and leave on that note, Josh. I, I can I kind of see some of that in there. And uh, what's funny is you say that because one of the modifications that we have planned for it already, it, it's, it's crazy. When we do sculpts, as soon as we get the design, we already start... Uh, thinking about modifications that we can do to it. Um, and one of the modifications will be a water creature, but inherently, no, not a water creature. Uh, Jonathan has walked away, so I can see your comments, although I will check them every once in a while. So if you guys want to comment on there, I, I will step away every once in a while as I cut my fingers. And uh, instead of cussing on the camera, I'll just kind of step back behind the camera. <laughs> That's not what I'm always doing, but uh, something like that. Uh, and it's also, you know, I'm trying to keep the mold. Normally, I've kind of set myself up in a better area to kind of do this, but I wanted to, to make sure I could, you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, and again, let's see if I can kind of just, I'm just kind of getting in there. I'm trying to get big chunks to come out like that. And I, yeah, and then just kind of pull that out. And it doesn't seem like big progress, but uh, you see, it, it's starting to come out. I won't worry about like deep into the crevices or you know any of the, the really points. I was doing that just so uh, it, it, it looks finished for you guys on camera. Uh, but I'll leave some of this stuff in here and that'll be a final cleanup. Uh, I go and I, I'll modify some of the sticks and I'll sand them to different points uh, and ends. That way I can get into into the areas you know a little bit more specifically with that. Um, right now I'm just trying to do a general general removal of stuff. And I'm trying to get back to an area where I can get some good chunks out of it. But you, you see how deep, there's a lot of undercuts and uh, little areas in there. Uh, so it was just gonna hold on to that clay no matter you know how hard I pulled on it. So it's just now it's, it's forcing it out. A little finesse, a little muscle. Can't say I don't bleed for my work. Yeah, 
So there's a really sharp point in there, but I think I got the clay to separate a little bit. Um, when we sculpt here, we, we have a couple of cool little methods that we use to, to make the clay a little bit more workable. And uh, I'm not gonna reveal everything, but you can see how there's, there's kind of strips with the clay um, and it, it helps it kind of come out in that same manner. But again, so you can see we, we spend a lot of time and detail into our sculpts. We want to make sure that the mask is going to be as functional as possible. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, any, that there's no, is the least amount of patching and fixing of the mask uh, pre-production time. You know, a lot of times, you know, a mask will take a lot of pre-work before it ever gets like paint and stuff. Uh, it's got big horns, if it's got different jaw pieces. Uh, that's not all done in one mold. Uh, that's done in multiple molds. And then the mask is built, you know, literally kind of glued and patched and seamed together. Um, power mesh and different reinforcements are, are added where necessary. Um, we use multiple grades of silicone in, you know, in a mask. So, you know, the horns may be a different durometer than the rest of the mask, so that way you, you still get, you know, if you have a silicone horn, it still feels differently, it, may, it still feels slightly realistic. Uh, you can get resin horns on any of the masks if you want them, um, but obviously it makes the mask a little bit less wearable, in my opinion. So, I mean, that, that, that could be just my opinion. I feel like I might be able to get a good chunk out of there some good movement on it. Oh, yeah, there we go. There. So there's a really deep crevice right along here that has all kinds of fine detail in there. And that's really what's holding a lot of this, this stuff on right now. So I'm hoping to be able to break that free. Just almost slice my finger. I felt it. See, I start getting excited when I move slow. I, I, I'm fine. I start getting excited because I want, I want, I want to see it too. Um, and that's when I start slipping in there. Come on out. Come on out. So there's a couple people on the stream that know what it is. I appreciate you not, not blowing it. Um, uh, as soon as I get this clean, uh, which will be by the end of the day today, uh, we'll do some castings tomorrow. Uh, we won't show you any of the raw castings, um, but I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping paint can prioritize at least one of them, and uh, we'll try and show you a finished one. What's today? Wednesday. Man, it would be beautiful to be able to show that to you first thing on Monday. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, again, we, we're slammed, we're, we're, we have film projects, we're prepping for Transworld. Uh, oh yeah, at one point I was talking about, you know, we, ha we have to build the booth because uh, we have uh, at least one brand new, Brooke will be coming. Uh, Brooke it has done the Asmodeus sculpt for us. Uh, she is work she's the one that did the realistic human that I was talking about earlier. Um, that will make a, a great kind not a clown but a, a that style of character you know kind of clown-esque uh you could do clown paint job on him but uh it, it would fit just fine with that um I don't, I don't really know how else to describe him maybe some bdsm kind of features to him but that's not it's not like nothing sexual like that but it, yeah some some chain centibite kind of centibite-esque 
uh, but not a Cenobite for sure. Um, man, I want to do a Cenobite. Uh, we should do a, a Cenobite. Uh, we have a relationship with Clyde Barker. Uh, we did his Hell Priest mask, the limited edition one. Uh, we still have some of those available if you guys are hardcore Hellraiser fans. Uh, it comes with a, his autograph and a, a certificate of authentic authenticity from him. Uh, but yeah, we have a good relationship with him. So I mean, maybe we, maybe we, we could do some of his style of Cenobites. You know, nothing from the movies, but you know, some of his personal designs. Uh, that'd be kind of cool to do. I'm sure he'd give us a lot of artistic license on that too. But yeah, all right, so the, the clay I'm working in right here is at a minimum of, a, of an inch right now, up to like an inch and a half of thickness. And it's just, it's a matter of just kind of working it in there and breaking it through into chunks that'll, that'll kind of come out without breaking my stick. Um, it, yeah, kind of goes to a point. I don't do a real sharp point stick. Um, you don't need that much to be able to cut through the clay. Um, and again, it's, it's this catch 22 of, well, get it warm and it'll be much softer to work with, but it, I, it would be literally me scraping this entire thing just you know, little scrapes at a time versus being able to yank those chunks out like, like I've been able to do for you every once in a while. Now, it, it will get to a point where that'll be the, the call. We'll be like, okay, let's just go stick it outside, let it warm up in the sun for a little while, and we'll start getting a lot more pieces like that. But uh, I, have, I have pretty high hopes that I can get that out in a, in a big chunk. It was really sticking right in here, and, and that's where a lot of the thickness is, is right there. And so I, it won't allow me to kind of peel it. So I'm going to have to just kind of break some of this free, get rid of some of that thickness. And then maybe the clay will flex enough. Yeah. I'm getting you notice. I'm, I said it earlier, but yeah, there's probably some new viewers and stuff like that. I'm, this is monster clay, uh, monster clay medium. Uh, it's 63 degrees Fahrenheit in the shop right now, so it, it's still pretty hard. Um, if it warms up, you know, a little bit over 70 or 75 or so, uh, it becomes much more malleable. Uh, but I'm saving all the clay. I'm pull, pulling it aside to a separate bucket, so that way I can weigh it after we're all done, and that'll give me a good determination of how much silicone. I'll need to pour into the mold to make a proper size mask. Um, we don't. We do multi-piece molds. Uh, we have a couple of three and four-piece molds uh, for some of the masks, but a lot of times, most of our, our molds are just a two-piece mold. Um, and these are the production molds, right? So these are designed for everyday use. Um, they're heavy-duty. Um, designed for hundreds, if not thousands of castings. Um, I mean, I, 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 if I think about it, it, it gets used, man, most, some of these molds are used at least every day, if not a couple of times a day. Um, yeah, I mean, not, not all our molds get that much, uh, but, but our most popular sellers pretty much never go back onto the shelf there it's a constant a constant go around um, we don't have multiple molds of of the masks uh, we do have some where we do have more than one mold um, sometimes it's a slightly different variation um, or a different core uh, for it but uh, for the most part every mask has its one mold this is the only mold for this mask right now but this mask should last us 10 years, if not more, of continual use, um, which which we hope this one gets a lot a lot of use. Um, we'd be happy to have to redo it again. Um, for the most part, if uh, damage happens to a mold, we try to repair it. Um, it'll get to a point where we'll determine that it's unrepairable, um, and unfortunately, that mask goes away. It, it'll be pulled off the website and off out of the catalog. Um, there we have, there's a couple of molds right now that we, we're in the final phases of determining what we're gonna be able to do with them. Um, but the nice thing is, is we'll just sculpt a new one. Uh, and we can kind of take that new design, we can uh, clean it up and fix anything that we didn't like on it. 
Um, you know, again, remember some of these maps were made, first made and designed back in 2000. But I doubt any of the 2007, 2008 stuff is still being produced. But, you know, yeah, some of 2008, 2009, you know, the Belials and stuff like that. I think he was redone, but I know there's a lot of version 2 Belials out there. Um, Yorick the Skull, uh, Smooth, Smooth version 1. Um, yeah, I mean, those are some of my earliest maps. Toasty, um, Crusty. Crusty hasn't changed much, I don't think. I think I think we're on version two of Crusty. Uh, here, let me check. Let me check some comments. Uh, Cameron, no, uh, Roy sculpts. Uh, we're so that's that. Those are the ones that we're prepping right now. Uh, his have some freaking intense horns on there that we needed to like really prep and 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 get ready uh they're gonna require some like custom molds uh we did just have roy back out at the shop just recently i won't i won't say anything other than that but he was just out here um maybe maybe two weeks ago um but yeah love roy and i i can't wait to show you guys his stuff uh yeah yeah no i i, I have no problem I, I get my hands in there and i get dirty with them herman I'll put, I'll put my blood all over. It, it's the mag that's the magic that goes into each mask right there. It's gross. I'll clean it out with alcohol later. Um, okay, so I see, uh, I see, like, Tabby's, I think, following along with us, doing some comments just in case. Uh, Mikey, how you doing, man? Uh, you, are you going to be at Transworld? Uh, Got to go get some drinks. Uh, but, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be there. Uh, same old thing. We are taking a really limited crew, so it's going to be uh, myself and Tabitha. Uh, Brett will be there. Jen will be there, and Brooke will be there. Um, and that's all. That, those are the only people we're bringing. We're hoping that Transworld's going to be just just crazy. Um, we don't know. We, we're, we're trying not to have any expectations of it. Again, that, that's our hopes. But actual act, expectations, who knows? Um, you know, it's going to be interesting. There's extended aisles. You know, the aisles are, some of the aisles are 20 feet. Um, supposedly, you can only go one way up and down some of the aisles. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're excited. We're, I'm ready to get out of the house. It's just, you know, we we're from California. We moved out here to Tad and I is what I say, not not from positive effects. I, I I went into a little personal tangent there, um, but yeah, no. So Tad and I are from California, um, and you know, Transworld was our big show every year where we got to see everybody. Uh, we moved out to Baton Rouge, and we've loved it out here. But all we we've just been here at CFX almost the entire time. Um, so yeah, we'd love to go see uh, our buddies over at Immortal, you know, our buddies, you know, at, at Gorgalore, um, Froggies. Uh, we, we, we've we actually had a few things with Froggies lately that, you know, we, we've had a lot more interaction with them. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, love to see everyone back in person. I don't know how it's going to work with the bar. I'm hearing all kinds of things like the Marriott's going to be limiting, you know, the people out front and uh, how many people in the bar. Um, we don't stay at the Marriott. We stay over at the Holiday Inn as a vendor. It's just so much more convenient because there's a back door over there. I'm revealing some secrets right now. Um, there's a back door and you can literally go right through the back door. And for us, uh, it's just, it makes it so much easier to get in and into our booth and get everything prepped. Um, so yeah, we stay at the Holiday Inn. Uh, you can't have our room numbers. Sorry, that's a secret. Um, yeah, it's a lot of the vendors stay over on that side. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if it's any less expensive anymore because uh, I know it, it, Holiday Inn was getting really expensive too. But it used to be a little bit less expensive option. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I go to Transworld, I'm not in my room. I, I go to my room to shower and sleep. Um, so I, I don't really care. Or I, I, I'm not fancy like that. I, I, I like to be fancy every once in a while, but I'm not normally fancy like that. So I don't care where I stay. As long as, long as the bed's clean, water's warm, um, and I don't have to deal with too many shenanigans. Um, stop unscrewing the light bulbs in the elevators, guys. Um, it was funny like the first four or five years. Now it's just stupid. Uh, so personal gripe. Uh, sorry. Let him, see what happens when you get me on live stream for a while? I just start opening up and you guys start getting to know the real Josh. Um, but yeah. Uh, Excited for Transworld. Uh, 
We have uh, obviously the new masks to go. We're gonna we're bringing a few hundred masks, uh, not nearly as many as we normally do because normally we'll bring a, a display, sometimes multiple displays of the same mask, and then we'll bring a try on of each of those. And that way the displays never come off the shelf. No one touches those. When you buy the mask, it's, it's brand new. Um, and then we'll sell the try-ons at a, a discounted price at the show, um, knowing that it's, hey, it, there's a possibility that, you know, two or three people have tried this mask on. Some of the try-ons never get tried on and we still sell them at the, the try-on price. Uh, there's a little insight for you there. Uh, I'm honest, I'm not a liar. I'll tell you if something's been tried on or not, or I'll tell you if I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I've, I've gotten a couple of people where it's like, hey, buy, buy, buy the try-on right now because no one's tried it on. So, and 50 bucks off, so I, I can't, I, I don't wanna say, say the price, don't, don't listen to me on pricing right now, Tabby will yell at me. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll get smacked from, uh, the, from the back of the shop and she's all the way at the front, it'll come from nowhere. Um, yeah, so I'm, I don't talk pricing because I always get my numbers mixed up. Um, Cause like I say, I always try to give as big a discount as possible. Uh, I want the mask in your guys' hands. And I'm just, I'm just scraping away right now. There's nothing exciting about what I'm doing. Um, again, I'm just trying to get some of these more detail, thick areas of the mask, you know, of the sculpt broken down. Um, that way I can hopefully peel some of this out of there. Let's see if it breaks out right there. And again, the bamboo is a nice soft wood. Um, the material we use for the mold is hard enough to withstand my little, like, I, I'm not, I'm not putting that much pressure on it, but it can withstand a little bit of, of my scraping. Um, I'm just very careful on any of the, the edges or sharp points, you know, not to, not to break anything off there. I mean, that would be tragic. Um, but yeah, and you see, that's, that's why as I'm doing this, you hear me complain that I broke the stick again. It's super soft. Uh, it, it's fibrous, so and it, it's more of an abrasive type thing. So if I scraped a lot, I'm sure I can take one of those little bits of texture down, but it's going to take me just sitting there, you know, for five minutes scraping at it. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, the, third, the third mask that I cleaned out this year here at CFX. Uh, again, they get better. The fungi, man, that was just, I, I kept going to everyone like, hey, I, I have to be doing, like, I'm nothing is working. I, I can't get any of this clay out. It's just there. Um, can I just melt it and let it pour out? And they're like, no. And that's when it's like, no, okay, you know, get, get your chopstick, get in there and just start using the hydraulic pressure and pushing it out, and hopefully you'll get some good chunks to come out with it. And you see, it's and it's a process. It's very relaxing to me. I don't I don't mind doing this. Um, it is time consuming. Um, there are a lot of other things that I probably should be doing. Um, but every once in a while, I can break away and try and get things like this done for you. Um, I know I know I owe a lot of people like contact uh, when this when I first took over. Uh, as mask operations manager. Again, Kenny, Kenny still owns CFX and he's the boss. I just, I'm just helping out on the mask side of things. Uh, but yeah, when I, when I took that position, my first goal was to get sculptors in house. Uh, I, I already had designs that we had been working on, but was to get sculptors in house and to get us some new mask designs. Uh, it, we had had some new mask designs, um, but we weren't satisfied with what we were releasing. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we had some really cool stuff to release. And so that's what we're working on. Like I said, I had five more sculpts. Um, one of them, like I said, was getting prepped to, to, this one just came out of the mold room. Um, the second mold for it, it, you know, the, the site, it's, it, it's a jaw piece. So when you see this, I'll, I'll tell you right now, this part of the jaw, that's not what it'll look like. Uh, there'll be an additional piece that goes on top of there and that will allow for you know a really good jaw movement on this mask in particular uh, not all the masks are like that um you know like the imp the imp is just 
that, that's one mold, one piece. It comes out as one unit. Uh, nice thing with silicone, even with undercuts and, and, and you know, big deep, deep areas for it to sit in, if you take your time, that silicone will just pop away. How long have I been uh, live here? Um, I cannot see. Uh, hold on one second there. I, I saw, Cameron, are those multiple eyes you see? Yes, they are multiple eyes. Start, starting to get it, starting to get it. All right. Okay, that, ah, that's what I was waiting for. Let's see what I can get. Ooh. Ooh, this might be good. And I, I am exerting a lot of force on this right now, but I'm also trying to control my strength so that way I don't, if it breaks or slips, I don't smash my hand right here on camera. Oh, but you guys are going to like this. So again, a little bit of patience and work around the edges really pays off. Oh, yeah, here we go. Ah. I did bang my finger right there at the end there, but it was worth it. All right. Um, all right. Wow, that reveals a lot. I'm trying not to mess up the sculpt so that way you guys can see a little bit, but I gotta make sure I don't lose these. Again, so it went like that. That's some of the forehead area right there. But that's all you get. That was that was all. I think I gave you a lot on that one. Now I will show you the molds. I do have the back half over here to go. Um, if you guys want me to keep live streaming on the back half, uh, tell me on the comments. You you gotta make sure you tell me. Um, otherwise, I'll just kind of do the back half myself. But there we go. There's the front half right there. Check comments here in a second here. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, so yeah, uh, so I'm just scrolling back trying to ca get caught up on ca uh, comments here. Uh, cover the multiple eyes. Uh, some type of crocker gator that it's in our a croc gator is on our list we're in louisiana it, it we need a, a really badass gator um but with the the revenant that just came out we didn't want like too many s real similar masks so on this round we went very like everything's very far apart from each other in designs um but yeah so that it, it's in our list uh i have 12 more designs that i want to do before 2022 so uh time's already running out this year it's already almost may and so i'm going to start working on those designs right now uh, i have a r couple really cool fairies and demons and stuff like that so yeah uh tony yeah it is super therapeutic except when you bang your fingers on the sharp parts of the mold um and if if i was again if we weren't on the live stream i probably wouldn't be uh moving as quick i'd move a little bit slower in those areas but uh yeah, it, it, it is what it is. I, I enjoy doing it. Um, oh, Nick Carroll, all right. I, almost, I, I won't confirm yes or no, but uh, it's, it's pretty obvious. Uh, all right. There, Casey, all right, good. I'm glad you're on here. Uh, I, again, sorry it took so long. I've been working. Uh, but yeah, so it's, uh, I'll do final cleanup on this bad boy. Uh, I'll get the, the back half cleaned out. 
and uh, it'll go over to Anthony. And uh, Anthony will get it all tapped up for hardware uh, and make sure everything's ready to be bolted together. We will uh, get prep the core. Uh, the core's all set. It's already over there. We, we have to do a little bit of sanding on the, on the core right now. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll pour our first one. Uh, no, hey, no, you're, Casey, don't be sorry that the eyes are so secure. Uh, that's exactly what we needed. And I, I have, they're all right there in my little bucket right now. And we're all so set. Um, okay, so Tony says to keep streaming. Um, all right, awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm, Casey, I'm glad you were on there for that. I, I wanted to at least document it. Uh, Casey was our second sculptor to come out here. Uh, she came out from Chicago. Um, was wonderful to have out here. Uh, I threw some big challenging stuff at her. This, this was a, a very intricate sculpt. And like I said, she, she'd never done a, a mask like, like this before, you know, with, with a core like what we do and all that stuff. Uh, and like I said, she knocked it out. We, I can't wait to have her come back out. I actually have a, a female, I'll just tell you, I have a female version of this one that I want to do. Um, so we'll have a companion piece between the two of them. Um, and I want her to, to really take charge on that one. And then there's another design that I think she'll be perfect at. Um, yeah, so we had, we had Roy Woolley come out here. We had Casey Tatis and we had Tony Mandel, uh, Tony Mann. Uh, Roy did two sculpts for us. Casey did this sculpt for us. And Tony did two sculpts for us. Uh, Brooke has done a sculpt for us. Uh, Farron, who's uh, someone in the shop, has done a sculpt for us. Uh, the, the sculpt that she did is not necessarily for our, our main catalog, but it will be a mask that's available with multiple uh, variations. Uh, nice. All right, Casey's going to get some uh, Cajun food uh, in honor of us. Some uh, crawfish etouffee. It's crawfish season out here, guys. Uh, we had the crawfish boil. Uh, everywhere you drive around town, it just smells like Cajun seasoning, um, and it's amazing. Uh, we love it, especially today's kind of nice out. I imagine that you know we'll be having some of that. But yeah, okay. Let me. I'm gonna get. Uh, since you guys want me to keep streaming, I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy out of the way. Because uh, I don't. Now that it's done, I don't want to knock it over and have anything bad happen to it. Um, I'm just on. This is my kind of little weird workstation at the very back of the shop because I'm always working on, on random projects like, you know, you know r and d different mask stuff uh, on how I can make the mask better. Um, Someone decided to put a huge key in here. There we go. Get that going. All right. Now again, so uh, there is a ridge along here that's super thick that I'm going to have to kind of pry and work on. I don't know if I'll be able to get that out at one piece. That might have to come out separately. But this part right here, I'm hoping to get to just kind of do a big pull over there. But I'm gonna have to break all these edges free and. Uh, just try to make sure it's ready to go. Um, I don't think there's much detail in that area. I can't remember exactly. But it is the very back of the mask. But yeah, uh, having all the sculptors come out was amazing. Um, you know, Roy, Roy's been a part of the haunted house industry for so long, and that's kind of my background. Um, I've, I've been in the haunt industry since 19... I'd professionally since 1995, um, I was like 19 years old, um, got a job with Universal Studios. Um, I did some stuff with Disney for a short period of time, not haunted house related, but uh, more on their audio visual side of things. Uh, you know, all the technical stuff behind the scenes. Um, worked at a haunted house right across the street from Disneyland called the Tower of Terror. It was a five story office building that had been a uh, vacant in Anaheim, Anaheim, California, uh, for a while, literally right off the, the five freeway goes right alongside this thing. And some, some crazy dude did a haunted house there. And, uh, it was sponsored by Josta Cola and Josta was, uh, one of Pepsi's products. It was made from some Brazilian bean. I can't remember the name of the bean right now. Um, Herman, you might, you might know, uh, what, what's the big, not like the Akai or whatever, but it, it it was some some berry. 
Um, and it was a, a soda based on it. It was like an energy drink before. This is, again, like I'm talking 95, 96. So no, actually before that, this was probably 94. Um, because I, I started at the Haunted Hotel in San Diego in 1995. Yeah, it was 1994. Um, <clears throat> aging myself here. I, I'm not a young man anymore. I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, but yeah, so I, I worked for this haunted house sponsored by Josh Stacola. They gave them five Dodge Rams, like Dodge Ram 1500s, with the back of each truck loaded to the top with Josh Stacola, like just pallets of Josh Stacola um, as giveaways. Um, it was a five-story building. They had a they they used three stories for the haunt. Um, in between, there was a bar that served alcohol. So you went through half the haunted house. And then you went to a bar and it had like live music and you can order alcohol, like hard alcohol or beer. Worst idea ever. Um, and then continue the haunt after you've had a drink or two, after you've calmed down and you're ready for the next part of the haunt. It wasn't that great of a haunt to begin with. I mean, it was, it was decent, but, um, so anyways, working for this haunted house, um, yeah, Disney, it wasn't sponsored by Disney, but Disney was like there every night like checking on what we were doing. Uh, it was kind of crazy. Uh, they, they offered me, that's how I got some of my work. They, they ended up trying to like coach me. Um, I walked on stilts. Um, and that, so my job at this haunt, I was a stilt walker. Um, I was the primary entertainment out front. And uh, I would run around and scare people in the parking lot. And they had guys that would rappel down the side of the building. You know, it's crazy haunter people, you know? And so yeah, they'd just go down there and re repel. Like once an hour, they'd do like this repel thing down the down the building. That was really cool. And so like right as soon as they were done, like everyone would be standing around. I'd come out and just and, like knock crowds of people over. God, I miss those days. Um, I hope we have a good Halloween this year. I, I'm, I'm trying to get my haunted house back open. Uh, it's really hard with the pandemic and everything like that to figure out exactly what direction I want to go. But anyway, back, back to the story. Um, See, so yeah, I go on tangents. Um, guys were pelling down the building, still walker. Um, have a great season at this place. I mean, we did we did thousands of people. I, I, I'd say easily between ten and twenty thousand people. Uh, which for a haunt in California is okay. We would do way bigger numbers than that down in San Diego at the Haunted Hotel. Uh, double, triple those numbers um, at at each event, but. Uh, for this thing being a, a one-off, um, it was expensive. Uh, back in 1994, I think it was like 30 bucks to go through. But it was really cool. Um, if you look it up, uh, you might be able to find it somewhere on there. But it was the haunted house that, uh, at the time, I think uh, O.J. Simpson trial was going on. And uh, you could vote whether O.J. was guilty or not at the end of it. And he, they had O.J. Simpson in an electric chair. Again, I didn't design it. it don't, don't, don't hold me accountable for it. Stuff. I'm just telling you guys a story right now, but yeah, uh, yeah, you, you could vote whether OJ got fried or not, and it was like kind of like the distortions electric chair uh, that's out there. But yeah, they dressed it up as OJ something. Made the news every single night. It was a big deal. Um, very controversial. Very fun to work at. Um, I would chase cars down in the parking lot. I, I was fast. You may not believe me, but uh, give me a pair of silk. I'll go up against anyone. Yeah, I chased cars down. Uh, one night I was running, snapped a stilt, rolled, and was able to pop up just perfectly and still got my scared and bragging a little bit. A little bragging bears are coming out. Uh, I don't do it very often, so it's kind of fun just talking to the camera, telling stories. Yeah, so I uh, worked for, for the, the Tower of Terror, three five story building. End of the season, the guy stole one of the trucks that the, the guy had put it on, the producer of the event, stole one of the Dodge Rams and all the money. Left the building with a four hundred thousand dollar utility bill between all of it, like the electric and everything else like that. Ran to Mexico. Never did another haunted house again in his life. So again, I was I was kind of thinking like, man, this is going to be my thing. This is going to be my haunt. I'm going to be able to work at this really cool thing. Yeah, I was kind of like one of the lead, lead characters there. Uh, we've gone to like I, I, I knew that the, the the guy that produced it. I knew like he. He would take me to different events because I did the silk. So, like, I knew him and his wife personally. Uh, he took me to UCLA to, like, some of the football games and, you know, would promote the haunted house out there. 
Uh, uh, I just add people. Say hello. Put, put your head in. There you go. Look who I have visiting me. Uh, yeah, so we're just doing some demolins, talking some old haunted house stories. Cool. Um, I don't even know if people are watching anymore. I, I may have bored everyone to death and, and they've all left. Can uh, you say something? <laughs> How's that demolding? All right. That half is done. I'm on the final stages right now. I've yeah, only been working for like an hour. I figured that was gonna come out easy. Yeah, and it, honestly, once I get this little ridge done, the whole thing's gonna peel right out, and I'll it'll be it'll be done by lunch. Cool. Um, okay. Um, haunted house stories. Uh, Tower of Terror guy took all the, all the money, left left everyone high and dry, and uh, ran to Mexico with one of the Dodge Rams. Uh, I think they finally arrested. I, I stopped tracking the story after a couple of years. Um, but yeah, I think they finally caught the guy and uh, arrested him. Um, and it was through the truck that they had caught him. Uh, some, they had found the truck because it was listed as stolen. And uh, yeah. So that was, uh, that was like my first, well, that was my second pro haunt that I ever worked for. The first one that I did, it was actually called the Haunted Hotel, which is going to be ironic when you hear the rest of my story here. Uh, but it was called the Haunted Hotel, or the Haunted, Ho the Glendora Haunted Hotel, and it was in Glendora, California. Um, and you have, uh, I saw Mikey on there from Immortal. That's that's up like right near where uh, the Immortal shop and all that. Yeah, Immortal Mask, their shop is up in that area. But yeah, in Glendora, uh, I worked at the Glendora Haunted Hotel, and it was sponsored by iWorks Entertainment, which is a uh, they're a big roller coaster virtual simulation company now. Um, but they did all the like, Universal Studios stuff, so it was in conjunction with Universal Studios. Um, sorry, I, I just I thought I had a really good piece in my hand right now, so I wanted to concentrate. Uh, but yeah, so uh, worked with Iowa Entertainment and Universal Studios. That was my very first pro haunted house I did. Uh, that's where I learned some of my first effects work and stuff, um, and really kind of got involved on the backside of things besides just scaring people. Uh, I was still doing the stilt walking every single night. Um, same type of thing. I just I had a scene in there that what was my character? I, I was a mummy. A big giant tall mummy with wrappings and everything like that. It was, it was a cheesy costume, but it was fun. I didn't really even have a mask, I don't think. Uh, I think I just had some bandages over my, my head. It was one of my first years really still walking. Um, and then after that, that's how I got any of my Universal contacts and stuff. And uh, I was really hoping that they were going to bring it back. It was in an old grocery store. It was maybe like, yeah, it was your, your typical 15,000 square foot wall framed haunted house. Uh, it had some good money behind it, so there were some really cool visual effects. Uh, they had this a bat for the time. Again, so this is 1993. Um, they had a really badass low-lying fog machine. It was an ultrasonic fog machine, so it wasn't like the dry ice or anything like that, but it was an ultrasonic way back in the day. I remember because it was like flood water everywhere, and uh, it like flooded the haunted house out like two or three times, but we just rolled with it. and It, it, it was worth it for the effect. Um, but yeah, so that was my the first pro haunted house that I ever worked at, um, and and did more than just scared, you know. I, I worked there, there was a, quite a few. There's like a Boy Scouts of America haunt, um, some local haunted houses. You know, I started doing haunts in, at my house. I don't count any of that stuff. Uh, yeah, I was, I was part of, part of the community and everything like that. But it, I didn't start pro doing it professionally, where you know, where I looked at it as a business. Like this is this is much more than just doing what I want to do. I want to provide a, something that people want to go to. Um, a lot of people that are into the haunted house stuff. I'm not talking. I, I sound like I'm talking trash or not because I love the entire industry. But a lot of people uh, do the haunted house for personal reasons, and then it, it just happens to make some money for them every once in a while. Um, I've always kind of looked at it as no, like I, I want to make a career out of this. I want to provide something really cool for everybody else. Uh, one of the things I always tell people when I'm at my haunted house, I don't know how I got on the haunted house tangent when I'm over here playing with a mask, but anyways. Uh, I think you do children. I do. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm dying to do a haunted house again. Um, but I don't wanna do a big one. Like, I, I, all the haunted houses I do are big these days. I don't wanna do, I, I wanna do something smaller so I can actually enjoy it again. But yeah, so one of the things I do at all the haunted houses is I just, I like to stand at the exit and listen to what people say. 
Um, I learned it from, uh, Greg used to do it all the time over at the Haunted Trail in San Diego. Um, just he'd, he'd call me over and be like, listen to these people. But yeah, you know, so that's, that's the joy that I get out of it. I, I, I really like entertaining people. Um, and that's how I got into the masks, obviously. So, uh, eventually found myself down in San Diego working for Greg Defada and Robert Bruce for the Haunted Hotel. Um, they had actually started the Haunted Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, Robert ran that one for the first few years. Uh, Greg was there the first year, but uh, then moved back to San Diego. And oh, I'm sorry, no, I had that. Wow, I had that totally reversed right now. Um, Greg stayed in in Louisville, Kentucky, and ran the Haunted Hotel there. And Robert moved back to San Diego and opened the Haunted Hotel San Diego. And so they were running both of those kind of congruently. And uh, I think Greg eventually was kind of like, "What the hell are you doing in San Diego?" And I'm out here in Louisville, Kentucky. Not dogging on Louisville, Kentucky, but San Diego is beautiful if you've never been there. Um, and so he uh, sold, they, they sold the Haunted Hotel, uh, Louisville, uh, not to its current owners. I think Kevin Stitch owns it now. Um, but, uh, God, I can't even remember the name of the person. I, I, it's been so long since I've really focused on that kind of stuff. But I'm just trying to kind of recall this on this live stream right now with you guys. I am making good progress with it right now. I'm, I'm loosening it up. So bear with me. Um, yeah, so then uh, Greg, yeah, Greg, Greg moved out to San Diego. Uh, they, had, they had two haunted houses in San Diego at the time. It was uh, the Haunted Hotel San Diego and Frightmare on Market Street. They were also partnered up with uh, the fairgrounds, and they were doing Scream Zone. Um, but then Greg opened up the, the Haunted Trail of Balboa Park, and it was a mile-long outdoor walk-through trail. Um, it's San Diego, so the weather's always beautiful. Um, so we didn't have to worry about anything like that. We would build outbuildings throughout the park um, that would serve as our scenes. Um, and man, that was the most popular event in San Diego. Um, very quickly, the numbers of that event surpassed every other event. It got to a point where uh, Frightmare was suffering because it was literally situated dead center in between the Haunted Trail and the Haunted Hotel. And the Haunted Hotel was the namesake that we were known for. That was the scariest haunted house in San Diego. Um, and then the Haunted Trail was, you know, the, the biggest, funnest event in San Diego. So uh, we ended up closing down Frightmare. Um, staying partnered up with Scream Zone, which was up in uh, Del Mar, which is probably a good 30 miles away, uh, 20 miles away. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Something like that. It, a good enough distance away from the Haunted Hotel and the Haunted Trail, that they want to scavenge business off each other. Um, and yeah, so I, uh, from year one, I was at the Haunted Trail. Um, I wasn't a manager, believe it or not, the first year, although I was kind of like the tech guy. I was, I was one of the number one guys. Um, and the manager, the very first year, had some challenges. Uh, we'll just say that. And so the next year, pretty much after that next year, I was pretty much the guy. And I, I volunteer a lot of time. Um, I'd pretty much only make them pay me for uh, my like scare time, but I'd drive down on the weekends and help paint and set up all the audio system. Uh, they quickly learned that uh, you know I was kind of good at lighting and, and audio. But yeah, for for a long time I would just uh, I worked two jobs, and so and then uh, I, I quit my my job and went down and worked for them full time to become their director of operations. It had gotten to the point where there was so much going on that. You know, they, they just kind of needed someone to help supervise everything. And that's all I did. I just kind of supervised, made sure that, you know, all the projects were coming to completion. Um, I still did a lot of the audio and electrical and the lighting. Um, filled in wherever I could. Um, towards the, the last couple of years, I was kind of running the actor crew. Um, you know, doing scheduling and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, and then, uh, then it got to a point where it was like, I, I, I had an offer, and I was like, let's go, uh, let's go open our own haunted house up in the Bay Area. So that's what we did. And uh, I'm going to stop my haunted house talk for a little while right now, because I just feel like I've been on a tangent of it, and I don't think that's that important for you guys, but maybe you guys can get me uh, talking about it again some other time. But I am making good progress right now with the sculpt. Right. As I'm pulling, I can, I can feel the suction of it kind of releasing a little bit. But I want to come over here on the side and break some of that free, because it just feels like it's sticking. 
But, uh, yeah, so I, I, but I've always been into masks. I've always been into uh, makeup and doing my own effects and stuff like that. I, I never really considered myself a good artist, although I can do a lot of things. I'm just not very good at that. I have good understanding of stuff. But I rush things, as you guys can tell. I start sweating. I start getting anxious. Oh. Come on, break free for me. We're getting there. We're really close, guys. Have you seen all of that whole thing live? Yep. That's cool. And uh, people seem like they're enjoying it. I mean, uh, when, it, when I started, a, a good part of the front bid had already come loose. Yep. So that was kind of literally just me grabbing it and pulling it. But now the rest of it has been me letting these people see how much work it takes to just get the mold ready. And that's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I was saying. I was like, this one's going really fast. When I did the fun guy, uh, that's Kenny. If you guys can't hear him completely in the background, we're just kind of chatting. Uh, but yeah, the fun guy took a day and a half of non-stop work. But yeah, you see it. My, my, my theory was correct. I'm getting a really good pull on this part right here. I'm just trying not to cut my hands open anymore. And so what happens sometimes too, as you're doing it right, that clay keeps rolling on top of itself and it just gets thicker and so you can't do it. So you gotta kinda break that plate like that. That was a huge chunk. Here, you see how thick that is though. So it's, yeah, it's taking some effort. I'm at a good spot. I'm gonna check some comments real quick. Oh, look at that, I'm already low battery. Uh-oh. I don't know if you guys are still there. I know my phone went into low battery mode. Uh, we're in the back of the shop. We're not in the primary area of the shop. Uh, here, let's see. So through those curtains, that's the main shop over there. I'm in the back fab shop. I'm probably at least 60 feet away from the nearest person. That's the only reason why it's so quiet. But that's why I'm back here is uh, I, I wanted you guys to be able to hear anything. Um, uh, Cameron, I mean, I don't know. I'm getting old. I don't know if I can still do all the stilt walking. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah. Boom. All right, uh, it looks like, uh, perfect. It looks like Tabby is still kind of monitoring comments, so that's good. I was a little bit worried about that. Um, all right, let's get this guy, let's get this guy done. I'm excited, I wanna get some uh, silicone going through the sky. hoping that whole little ridge was going to peel out of there. I don't know if it is right now. I might have to break this into two different pieces.
Ah, so close. All right, so, um, hey, Tabby, can you do me a favor? Do we have a battery pack, or can you bring me back a, a phone charger? Because this live stream's going to die because my battery's getting pretty low. Um, I would love to just kind of stay live. I, th I think you're watching. So, Tabby, Jonathan, if you can relay to her. I'm so close, and I would hate for it to go out right as I get this this ridge to come out of there. It'd be awesome if I could finish the entire demolding with you guys. Oh I'm so close. Ah, oh, Tabby to the rescue. Uh, so I have my, the, the cable and a, and a block, but I don't know if it'll reach anything. Grab that green extension cord that's right there. We're getting there, guys. We still have about like 16 viewers. Now we're back down to 14. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been monitoring you guys. I've been, I've been trying to keep you guys uh, informed, in shite. And again, like, I, I called her back there and we're, we're going to get it, but literally we're at, we're at the final at piece. The very I'm end. This is going to just peel out of there. Hi, Casey. I don't have any of my makeup or my face on today, so you're not going to see me. I'm not going to do it. Hey, Nanas, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so your audio has been kind of going like in and out. It's because of uh, my battery. It's, keep, it's going to low power mode and stuff like that. Um, it's been doing it like most of the stream, so it's not recent. So I, I just... I don't know what it is, Deal and it's it. not necessarily that, so I just wanted to, just wanted to let you know. Good. I mean, I was just boring them with super fun stories. Not necessarily. People are excited about it. Hey, Tyler, uh, we've been cleaning out our newest mold. <laughs> That's what's been going on. Uh, Herman wanted to know. He's like, not sure if it's a trade secret, uh, but is the main material of the mold epoxy? Katie, are you still back there? No, I think he's out in the front. Um, he walked back upstairs. I mean, it's, it's epoxamite. I, I think I can say that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's an epoxy base. Uh, but yeah, it, we use epoxamite. That, that might have been a secret. I don't know how I hope <laughs> Not anymore! All right. Well, you're not in. You're not in frame. It's just the mold right now. Okay, that's fine. That's even better. Wow, you're getting all the noise from the air compressor and shit right now. <laughs> well, it hasn't really ran a whole lot, so like I can tell if there's like time for it to build up. Yeah, they're all out there using air right now. They're all painting some stuff. <laughs> all right. So it seemed like the best way to do this on the Check goes epoxy on your houses. Epoxy on all of your houses. <laughs> That's actually yeah, pretty no, funny. Uh, we use a lot of epoxy here in the shop. Um, obviously, a lot of silicone. We have a different, bunch of different grades of silicone. We buy it in 55-gallon drums. Um, There's some, some commentary and stuff like that on some of the pages. Uh, there, We are not short of silicone at all right now. We have plenty of silicone. Um, we're aware there may be some price changes and stuff like that. Right now, that is not affecting. Mm -mm. And you, you guys have nothing to worry about with that. Um, again, we have plenty of silicone in house right now. That was all bought at, at the same. Yeah, at the beginning prices. of this year. Yeah. 
uh, Cam, yeah, the the paint room is in full swing. Uh, we've got almost everything done for Transworld with the exception of about 15-ish um, masks. Uh, and those are some of the last ones we put in, not including uh, this one that will eventually be uh, added to their lineup. Um, but yeah, so we've got about, uh, about two dozen other masks that are on, in various stages of being finished. Uh, some are with hair, uh, and some are, uh, about to be coated. So that's when, uh, we're going to get out of here in a little bit as Josh and I head to lunch and, uh, paint's going to come back here and do that final step and coat some of the masks that have been painted and just are waiting for that last step. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it, like somebody else said, it was pretty quiet sounding back here, but that's, that's because this is the back side of the fab shop. There's not a lot that goes on around back in here unless we're in the middle of doing something uh, like a large film the project. The room is or... directly behind where the camera... Well, there's actually a CNC machine that's directly behind where the camera is right now. <laughs> and just to the left of that is the mold room. And so that's kind of why we're, we're in this little area. The mold room, everything is walled off in separate yeah. apartments. So yeah, so this, so this is the fab shop. Through that curtain out. is the main part of the shop. Through this curtain is our mold room, and that's one of our sharks that we did for, I think, Ozark Sharks? I believe so. With a big old bite out of it. So he's a shark. Do, 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 do. Here comes Ken. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I am. All right, guys. There you go. I appreciate you guys sticking around with me for so long. The final piece right there. Well, we don't have that yet. In terms of this mold right here, <laughs> um, but Kenny's working on that jaw. You heard him. He's right Yeah, he literally right went there. through the curtain. Um, Ignore so the yeah, man behind so, the curtain. So what I'll do right now is I'll kind of go through. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll sharpen my little stick up a little bit. I'll get in here. I'll get all the little detail, uh, the clay out of there. Uh, we'll give it a good bath. Um, and then, yeah, it'll go over to Anthony. It'll become Anthony's property. Anthony's uh, our casting manager. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll become a priority for him to get a couple of these out of the mold. Yep. So... Uh, I'm gonna let you guys go. I appreciate everyone sticking around for so long. If this is kind of fun, I'm gonna try and do a little bit more things like this, uh, just from me. I know Tabby does her thing here at the shop, uh, but I'm gonna try and show you guys as much technical stuff as I can, and you know, kind of the behind the scenes on all the work that goes into these masks. Uh, so uh, I don't know when I'll do another one. Like I said, uh, hopefully we have a mold coming out of that mold room real, real soon here, and we could maybe do another live cleaning. Um, but yeah, if you guys have suggestions on what you would like to see, let me know. Um, but yeah, I, like, I guess we could uh, do eventually a live stream of me doing pictures of all the masks, you know, but we're gonna have to set up a different phone. I don't know, that might not be as entertaining because I'm just sitting there taking pictures of the masks and all that stuff. But this is much more entertaining. Well, we, let's do a photo shoot. Well, that too. I mean, we could definitely do that. I know we need to do that. Yeah. Speaking of, yeah, I do have to talk to you. Live on a photo shoot, and maybe we'll do one of our because I think we can start getting back down into the French Quarter and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, maybe we go do another photo shoot. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tyler, yeah, uh, Joshua just cleaning out uh, as much of the clay as possible by hand. <clears throat> excuse me, in this new mask mold that we have coming out right here. Um, there's still a little bit of finessing to do there uh, before it can be fully run, but uh, it's it's nearly there. That, it's it, this I'll, this came out fantastic I'll, compared I'll, I'll, to all the. Here's, so here's the back side, guys. In case you guys didn't get a chance, uh, I already showed you guys the front side. You guys have to rewind and scrub the video back for that. Um, all right, I got some clay built up down in here. There's some cleanup to do up in there. Um, I'll wire, not wire brush it, but nylon brush it with some uh, so, some solvent, and we'll clean the rest of that out of there. We'll get it as clean as possible. Um, yeah, then it goes in for hardware, so it'll get screw taps all over the place. Um, the core will be reinserted into it, and it'll get poured with some silicone. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see.